Good evening and welcome to CTV 30's coverage of Thornton Academy High School football. Tonight, the start of a long rivalry. The Bonnie Eagle Scots hosting the Thornton Academy Golden Trojans. Both teams come in one and one. And of course, Bonnie Eagle, first year in Class A football, their fifth year as a football program. Very successful last year, seven and one in the Campbell Conference, of course, in Class B. And this team, a legitimate threat here to Thornton Academy. Both coming in one and one. Bonnie Eagle, a tough loss last week to Oxford Hills. And we all know Thornton Academy's difficult loss up in Waterville. So this could be anybody's ball game, and the Trojans really have to come to play. They really do. Bonnie Eagle is not a slouch in Class A. This team is for real. As you said, this team could make the playoffs easily five and three. And they still have to play Thornton. They still have to play Biddeford. But this team really is big. They're strong, and they're physical. And Thorne has to come in here with the mentality, we really have to come in here. This is no slouch. We have to play tonight. As far as this facility goes, a very nice one here in Standish. And Bonnie, you're looking to improve things in a couple of years, building a brand new one. But the lights are on. The crowd's starting to fill in. And it should be a great game. Of course, Thorne Academy returns their three starters who were out last week. They're all back in action. Heidish, True, and Brochu back in the lineup. So that means positive things for Thorne Academy. But again, the leadership of Chris Duranso at quarterback, he's been brilliant at times, but he's also thrown a lot of interceptions. He has to keep the interceptions down this week. He really does, and that's a key for Thorne Academy this week. They have to keep the interceptions down. Pass receptions are a big key. They really have to come back from last week's tough loss at Waterville. It doesn't matter where you play, but after a loss like that, they have to come out intense with intensity tonight, and running and passing the ball is just a start. And the other big thing, of course, is the penalties. Thorne Academy has been victimized two weeks in a row with big penalties, none bigger than last week. And up at the school this week, talking with the coaches on the big bulletin board for the football team, a big sign saying no penalties. So hopefully Thorne Academy can stay away from those here this evening. It should be a good one. One and one, Bonnie Eagle facing one and one Thorne Academy. We're back right after this. Stay tuned for football on CTV 30. To a Welcome back to Standish. Jay Harper along with Tony Ryan, Dennis Avery on the camera this evening. It's Thorne Academy, Bonnie Eagle, high school football. And the rivalry starts on the gridiron. The Trojans enter and, of course, that one and one record, the very disappointing loss to Waterville last week, a game that they seem to have in hand, leading 8-7. The football down at the 25-yard line of the Panthers, first and 10. Fumbled exchange on the snap, and then, of course, the defense doing their job in that big crucial roughing the passer call, and call that not too many people were pleased with or agreed with, right from the coaching staff to the players, and, of course, right on through the fans in the broadcast booth, like and the Trojans end up losing 21-8 to Waterville to fall to 1-1. One one. Bonnie Eagle started the season with a win over Sanford, a hard-fought win at Sanford, 6-0. And then last week... They lost to Oxford Hills as the Vikings won 27-20, but the Hills supposedly one of the powers Play in tonight, Class A East. Bonnie Eagle High School Band, and a good performance by, by Bonnie Eagle. So this should be a good one. Both teams with some size, both teams with some speed, and of course Bonnie Eagle, the impressive 7-1 record last year in Class Game B in the Campbell Conference. By as video, the Tri-Captains for Bonnie Academy. Reynolds. Hook up with the Tri-Caps of Bonnie and Eagle. Of course, your Tri-Caps with Thorn Academy is Tabor, Game ball is also sponsored by Nancy Jake DeRocher, and, Bill, Eric and, Greg Moore. and NRAC Sargent. And the three for Bonnie Eagle, Chad Gagnon, Kyle O'Connell, and Jeremy Braun. <coughs> About set to start. The Golden Trojans will receive tonight's opening kickoff for the first time this season. Bonnie Eagle, as we said, one and one, and have a very talented backfield. Senior quarterback Jeremy Braun leads the show. Andy Jarvis is the fullback. Kyle O'Connell, the tailback. O'Connell rushed for over 130 yards last week against Oxford Hills. Evely Watson, number 29, the Z-back. Jason McLeod, the wideout. And Eric Moyes, the tight end. Back deep to receive for the Golden Trojans. The very talented and dangerous Chris Mercier, number 11, stands in the middle to his left. The Trojans welcome back Ryan True after his one-week absence. And on the right, Dave Boot. Caught last week's two-point conversion, which looked to be the winning points. We're not. Short, deep receiver in the middle is Brian Thompson, the junior. Great crowd on hand. A very cool evening in Standish. 
temperature is expected to drop down into the 30s tonight, probably in the mid 40s by the time this one's over. Watson will do the kicking for the Scots, and we're underway. A nice end-over-end -end kick. It'll be Mercier from his own 15-yard line. Squirts up to the right side, gets a couple of key blocks. Still on his feet, knocked out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. And again, an impressive return for the junior, Mercier, and the Trojans will set up the offense first and 10 Ball return from their by own 35. 11, Mercier. Mercier, the dual player last week first for the Golden Trojans. Whether it was special teams, offense, or defense, he was in on every play, and Thorne Academy needs him to step up tonight. Even though he's a junior, he really has to play well. Chris Duranso leads the show at quarterback for the Golden Trojans. His offensive line, Travis Roy at guard, Lamar and Tabor on one side. It'll be Buffard along, I believe Nightingale will still start an old heightish back, but not starting this evening, and it will be Chris Nightingale on the left side. He'll play tackle, and Buffard will play guard on the left. The right side of the line is Lamar and Tabor. Hand off and a big stick right off the bat. Middle linebacker Chris Charest, a 5'11", 215-pound senior, levels. Ball carried by number 20, Ryan True Ryan for the True. Trojans. Loss of three on, on the, the play. On the tackle for the Scots, number 55, Chris Charest. Jared Trudeau, the fullback, Ryan True, the tailback, Mercier, the Z-back. At wideout, Matt Brochu returns. The tight end will be Brian Second Howard. Second 13 for the Trojans. Trojans send Brochu and Mercier to the near side of the field. They come out in the eye. Duranso to pass. Has some protection, firing out for Mercier, way overthrown. And that falls incomplete. It'll bring up a third down. Incomplete pass for the Trojans. 12. No flags on the play. This is a big play for Thorne Academy, even though early in the game, it's good to start off on the right foot after There's last the week's loss. Trojans. You don't want to come out here, go three plays and out, and have to put your defense right on the field early. Bon Eagles defense. The tackles, Randy Harriman and Eric Moyes. Defensive ends, Kurt Gagnon and Larry Pelletier. The backers, Gagnon, Charest, Sawyer, and Jarvis. O'Connell, McLeod, and Jelbert are in the defensive secondary. Blitz coming in, and down goes Chris Duranzo in a heap. And he gets leveled from the outside, number 44, rushing in Andy Jarvis. He really led the way, got help from big number All 78, the for the start, Robbie, number 78 Robbie Harriman. So a very auspicious start for the Golden Trojans. Three plays and a loss of seven yards, and they'll be forced to punt. Dave Booten handles that chore for the Golden Trojans. Well, Back to receive O'Connell along with number one, T.J. Jelbert. Long count for Thornton Academy. Another pretty good kick by Booten. Comes up short, nice job fielding the ball by Jelbert. He short hopped the ball very dangerously, able to hold on down by his knees and gets it out to the 48-yard line where Bonnie Eagle will take over, first and 10. One, That's a tough play for Jella. the punt returners, kick returners tonight because of the lights here. The ball gets hung up, and they have a hard time seeing that, and he did a great job just to take that on the fly. And the Scots come out with their first possession after a very impressive defensive stand. Jeremy Braun, number 13, leading the show. Jarvis and O'Connell. Braun fakes, looking to pass, throws it out in the flat, intended for Eric Moyes. And Incomplete pass for the ball thrown squad. short, and it'll be second down and 10. Braun had him wide open. Two green jerseys second to come out there to help, and I didn't see many Thornton Academy jerseys over there. He had a lot of green room to run up the sidelines. And we apologize for our concentration tonight. A little bit <laughs> scattered with the PA announcer right below us, very loud here at the Scots Home Complex. And of course the poles and the wires as well. Hand off up the middle, Jarvis, and not much doing. Ball on the turf. A fumble, the ball came out late. Let's see if they'll rule that a legal fumble or not. Scott's ball. Chad Gagnon apparently coming up with the fumble. It'll be third down and Eight yards now for Bonnie Eagle. 
Third and eight for the Scots. The Scots are coached by Kerry Briggs in his fifth year. He's been here all five years. And a very fine head coach. He's done a nice job with this Bond Eagle team. Braun to throw, looking for the screen, setting it up, but nothing there. And the ball falls incomplete as Kyle O'Connell fell down. And incomplete Brian Thompson had Scott. coverage with O'Connell. They got tangled up, but no flags on the play. It'll bring up fourth down and eight, and Bon Eagle now in a obvious punting situation. But so far, Bon Eagle winning the war of field position. Fourth and eight. O'Connell dropping way back, and now he'll move up a little bit. Boy, that's a long snap. Now they send some motion. O'Connell does boot it away. It'll bounce on Mercier. He's coming up to field it, and Bonnie Eagle downs the ball before Mercier could catch it. I would think that, I don't know, I guess on that one, the ball hit the turf. You don't have to give him room to catch it. So the ball is down very dangerously. Mercy are coming up. Trojans ball on the 21, first and 10. Ball spotted at the 21, 9-10 to play here in the first quarter. Thorn Academy nothing, Bonnie Eagle nothing. Brochu will come to the near side. Mercia splits to the far. Doranzo brings them out in the eye. Pitch out to True. True dances inside, and Bonnie Eagle stacking up, swarming on the defensive side, and Ryan True nowhere to run. Bon Eagle doing a great job. They have nine guys on the line of scrimmage. They are stuffing anything Thorns want want to do, Gary running the ball. Thorn has to go in the air, the make Trojans. them pay for the sending nine guys Scott, up to the line of scrimmage. Bon Eagle showing Thornton's passing game no respect at this point. As you said, Tony, they got to stack up at the, the line Trojans. of scrimmage, and they're forcing their wideouts, defensive secondaries, excuse me, to play one on one out here, and they feel like their secondary can handle Thorn Academy's. Wideouts. Duranzo on the option. He's grabbed, tossed, and thrown down. And a big loss on the play once again. In on, on the stop the sack, for the Eagle, start, Larry Pelletier. Number 51, Larry Pelletier. So that'll bring up another third down and 16. Third and 17 for the Trojans. For the Golden Trojans. Too many guys for Thorne to block up front. They got two guys to every one offensive lineman up there. They're stunting nine guys against the run. You would have to think that Vaughn Eagle has changed up dramatically from what they did last week because Thornton just seems totally out of sync and they're not ready for this many men to handle the blocking assignments. Duranzo's gonna try to throw. Has time, firing out deep. Got Mercier out there, O'Connell getting back and the ball knocked away at the last minute by O'Connell. Incomplete pass, knocked Mercier down by was number 26, open. Kyle O'Connell. Just a little bit underthrown, and that'll bring up fourth and long and another punting situation for Thorn Academy. Great call by Thorn Academy. Looks like Bonnie Eagles playing a little zone, and Mercy just got behind it. When Durantza threw it a little late, well, Mercy had to wait for the ball, the give O'Connell enough time to tip it away. So Booten now will stand back near his goal line to kick it away. Shelbert and O'Connell will stand inside Thornton's territory to receive as they stand at the 44-yard line. <laughs> Gets it away off to the right of his foot. And Mercia will finally down it at the 36-yard line. Ron Eagle well inside Trojan territory. A first down and 10. Very good punt off. This is one of the true successes in building a well, successful high school the program. High gate, the middle school gate. It reminds Hammer. me of Thorn Academy's success that they had in ice hockey. Golden Trojans within five years reaching the Class B finals. A game they should have won and lost to the Yarmouth Clippers and a great one. Pitch out to O'Connell. He gets off the left side for a gain of about Ball carried by number 26. four yards. Kyle O'Connell. We'll spot him back just a little bit. 
gain of three on the play. That'll bring up a second down and seven. O'Connell has to have a, another game like he had against Oxford Hills last weekend. For, to have, for Bonnie Eagle to have a good game tonight, he basically runs their entire offense. Second and eight for the Scots. Oh, Thompson coming in to Jarvis and saying, hello. And Jarvis looking around saying, what happened? Ball carry by number 44, Andy Jarvis. On the tackle for the Trojans, number 35, Brian Thompson. That'll bring up a third down and five. Third and five for the Scots. Another big one for Bonnie Eagle here. They could really get, if they can get a first down, this really puts a lot of pressure on the Thorn Academy defense. McLeod goes to the far side of the field. Kirk Gagnon comes to the near. Pitch out, and O'Connell trying to move inside. Beats one man, and he can't beat another. Has a fine job of getting down low and making a tackle. Greg Lamar, the big defensive tackle. Brings him down well short of the first down. Fourth and well, the five the now. Coaches, number 78, Greg well, at the Lamere. 30, obviously, well, the if you're Coach Scott, Griggs, you got to go for it here deep inside Thornton territory. Fourth and five I would, the but they're going to try and punt it. I think here this is a good test for your young players here. See if you have enough confidence to try and go for it. And Thornton Academy obviously going to watch, hopefully, for the fake kick. And the way they ran motion last time and faked the play out, you got to be careful. No, they still will punt it away. And the kick will sail into the end zone, so only a 10-yard pickup for Bonnie Eagle, and you have to wonder about that. Maybe feeling like he can get, if his defense holds up, get good field position. Trojans ball on the 20. Moving back another 10 yards. Everly Watson, 29, handling the punting chores. And Looking for that pooch kick, he didn't get enough angle on it, and it went into the end zone. The Trojans start first down and 10 from their own 20-yard line, so their field position has got progressively worse. Started at the 36, last time at the 21, this time at the 20. And Thornton has done nothing but lose yardage. Negative offensive yards. Handoff up the middle, and Trudeau busts forward for a positive gain on first down. He'll pick up four yards, and he'll bring up a second and six. Jared Trudeau, he has to get into the game tonight. They're going to take out the outside with Duranto and Trudeau, but if Trudeau starts running up the middle and getting gaping holes, they have to stop that and got to give up the outside. Second and six for the Trojans. 4.35 to go, first quarter, still no score. Mercia comes to the near side. O'Connell picks him up, sole coverage. Justin Allen to the far side. And again, sole coverage out there. Mercier fires out and behind Allen. Excuse me, Duranzo firing out behind Allen. And the ball falls incomplete. No flag on the play, incomplete pass. They're really daring Thorn Academy's passing game. Sole coverage on the wideouts, and they're gambling, stacking everyone inside. And so far, it's paid off. Duranzo not able to exploit that one-on-one -on -one coverage with anybody. And Thornton again with a big third down. This time, though, it is less than 10 yards, so that third and six for is the, Trojans. the positive outlook for Thorne Academy. It really is, but a play that might be run here. Mercer's getting sold coverage. See if the corner will bite. Maybe a little fake and go, and with Mercer's speed, if it's sent out there, they're not going to catch him. Brochu and Mercia both go to the far side. This time, they go a little zone to the Scots. And the handoff to Jared Trudeau. Trudeau will be very close, but... Again, it'll depend on the spot. He fell right on the 30-yard line, so he may have just enough. And they do spot him over the 30, so Thorne Academy. Ball carried by number 33, Jared Trudeau. With a first running down. play on third and six, come up with the first first down. Of the evening. First and 10 for the Trojans. The ball now just over the 30-yard line. Allen and Mercia come to the near side. True and Trudeau in the eye. Ryan True into the secondary. He's got some running room if he can get one block, and he can't quite get it. 
Number 74, Nightingale was there. It looked like he was going to have a shot at the block, but he couldn't quite pick it up. And true, though, burst up the middle for 20 yards. Ball carried by number 20 for the first down, Ryan True. So now the blocking assignment starting to sauce, come to Eric shape. Boyd. And those quick hitters now, they're going with Thornton Academy with the quick openers. First and 10. And not well, wasting any time trying to get outside or slow developing plays. Thornton Academy with 26 yards back-to-back -back running plays. Trudeau off the right side. He'll get a couple. On that last play, Jay, Bonnie Eagle sent two linebackers stunting, and they ran right past Drew when he got the ball. The gaping hole, the easy 20 yards. And on that play, they leave him back and only get two. And seven, Maybe Bonnie Eagle's trying to test what Thorne Academy is going to do. Second down and eight. It'll be Brochu and Mercia to the near side of the field. Durancer the throw, lobbing it out downfield, looking deep. The ball's going to be picked off. Jelbert's got it. Got a lot of running room on the right side, and now it's knocked out of bounds. It'll be Duranso, the quarterback, taking the big hit and taking him out of bounds. And the intended receiver, Brian Holland, goes down in a heap. He gets up Interception slow. Interception by number one, TJ Jelbert! My family's affiliation with the Stockholm Benefit Savings Bank goes back at least 100 years. My grandmother made deposits at the bank, including one from me when I was born. Our family has done business with the bank for over four generations. Why? Because Stockholm Benefit Savings Bank is a very human place. One is not a mere account number, but a person treated with respect and appreciation. After a day of hustle and bustle, treat yourself to Alice's Place, 25 Washington Avenue, Old Orchard Beach. Alice's Place is the home of the Stromboli and also offers complete Italian dinners, hot and cold sandwiches, delicious soups and salads, and fresh dough pizza and calzones. And be sure while you're there to ask about their desserts and luncheon specials, and remember, Alice's Place delivers. Hey, there goes Mr. Alice. Make your presentations come to life with color. Mailboxes, etc. brings you Xerox color copies for as low as 79 cents. And there are so many possibilities. You can turn black and white copies to color. You can highlight color, color conversion, and merge documents. So get your high-resolution color copies today at Mailboxes, etc. on Saco Island, your local UPS fax, copy, and now color copy store. Tradition and Maine go hand in hand. And one tradition the locals enjoy is visiting Wormwoods by the breakwater, Camp Ellis. Wormwoods has been a family affair for more than 50 years, serving up the finest in fresh seafood, certified Angus beef, as well as chicken and pasta dishes. Wormwoods enjoys making you feel at home with hearty meals, lighter portions for small appetites, and gladly accommodates those with special dietary needs. Visit Wormwoods. Become a part of the tradition. Pocket collapsing on Duranso, and he unloaded it for Howland. Howland got turned a little bit, not able to get back to the ball, and Jalbert, with the deep coverage, picks it off, and a fine return out to the 44-yard line. And again, Duranso falling into that, forcing the ball maybe just a little bit, and he throws another interception. That's a tough one, though. The pressure was coming in, didn't have enough time to look over to his two wide receivers. Hoping Howard can get it overthrown a little bit. Jalbert with the pick and runs it back. Bon Eagle now without their football. Both teams use their own offensive ball. And they've stopped play for that. 2.32 to go. First quarter. Bon Eagle nothing. Thorn Academy nothing. You're watching Trojan football on CTV 30. First and 10 for the Scots. McLeod and Gagnon come to the near side of the field. Split backfield. And Braun looking to throw. Looking down the field for O'Connell. O'Connell busting out over the middle. Coverage by Booten. And 
the ball. Incomplete pass. Just over thrown. It'll bring up second and ten. Another second by Braun to O'Connell, and I, I think he might have sprung a touchdown. Thornton going back in that two deep zone. Bonnie Eagle sending four wide receivers. They're using three wide receivers out, stretching the Thornton Academy defense, only allowing Thornton Academy to have six or seven players up front, and that's when they're going to be able to run the ball. Pitch to O'Connell to the left side. O'Connell trying to dart in, and Kyle Shaw comes up to knock him down with a big helmet on him. Trudeau got a piece on the way by. And no gain on, on the, the play. On the tackle for the Trojans, number 16, Kyle down. Shaw. On the carry for the Scots, number 26, Kyle O'Connell. Shaw with great safety pursuit there. Inside out. Come up through the middle and force the ball to the outside. And your cornerbacks are supposed to do just the opposite, outside in. Shaw came inside and then out and put a nice helmet on O'Connell to knock him stiff. Third down and ten. Three receivers to the far side, the trips, and they're setting up the screen over the middle. Wide open is Moyes, and Moyes will have a first down as he gets drilled back, but not before he picked up the first down. That's a great call by Bonnie Eagle. You make Thorne bring four guys over the wide receivers. They get the tight end on a linebacker, and just a little in, ten yards, first down. Number 83, Eric Moyes. First down, Scott. The ball now at the 44 of Thorne Academy. A first and 10 for Bonnie Eagle. Braun on the broken play, it looks like, and trying to get outside. He's going to be dragged down. Tackle on the far side of the field by number 43, Joey Bovi. On the tackle for the Trojans, number 43, Joey Bovi. Ball carried by number 13, Jeremy Baron. Second and 11 for the Scots. Well, there was two minutes on the clock moments ago, and now it reads zero, and I believe the officials on the field now keeping the clock here in the first quarter. Still no score, a second and 11 as Jalbert and Gagnon both come to the near side of the field. Braun goes to O'Connell, darts up the middle, cut back inside, and O'Connell with a big pickup, ball on the field, but Bonnie Eagle comes up with the loose football. The ball all Scott the way down the to Thornton Academy's 20-yard line, and a nice stick down in the secondary. The ball came free, but Jalbert there alertly and comes up with the loose ball. Second time tonight that Jalbert's come up big, an interception to start this drive, and now the recovery on the fumble. the end of the first quarter. And that'll do it here in the first quarter. Kyle O'Connell for and the first down. Yet another scoreless first quarter. The Trojans have played three games, all three times. No score after one. We'll take a break. Back after this. Brady's has moved and is bigger and better than ever. Now they have a new retail store at 464 Elm Street, Route 1, Biddeford. Full of jackets, tees, sweats, and sports shirts with your favorite team logo ready to wear. Hi, I'm Mike from Brady's Green Print. For price, quality, service, and dedication, come see us. Now at 464 Elm Street, Route 1, Biddeford. First, for your personal sports clothes needs. family welcomes you to the Village Inn restaurant of Old Orchard Beach. At the Village Inn, you will enjoy a warm family atmosphere and generous portions of fresh, delicious seafood, pasta, and beef. Dine in comfort as you savor shrimp, lobster stew, and prime rib. Or bring the whole family in for steak, lobster, chicken, or our famous seafood platter. Relax in our lounge or plan your next banquet for our newly renovated function room. The Village Inn of Old Orchard Beach for delicious family dining. CD-ROM, Windows, Internet, Modem, CompuServe. If these words have no meaning to you, then you need to learn about WidgetWorks. New to the area is a revolutionary computer resource center that makes computers accessible, affordable, and fun. You're observing a partial list of services. Computers are a fact of life. They can be confusing, difficult, or painless and pleasurable. Come to WidgetWorks. Let them teach you the painless facts of life. Barnum Animal Crackers next to Jurassic Dinosaur Cookies. Gumballs and Mary Jane's next to Nintendo Bubblegum. 
penny candy everywhere. Are you in the Twilight Zone? No, you're at the Wayway store where every day is a step back to 1929. Stop in and visit with Catherine and Peggy for all your everyday grocery needs and then some. And remember a slower, kinder time. From penny candy to padlocks, dried beans to dolls with homemade outfits, you'll find it at the Wayway store. Step back in time at the Wayway store without leaving today. First and ten. Welcome back to Standish as we start the second quarter. Jay Harper and Tony Ryan. And Bonnie Eagle with a first and ten at the Trojans' 20-yard line. O'Connell in motion. They go up the middle to Jarvis. And he gets about a yard to Sergeant and J Jake DeRocher in on the stop for Thorne Academy. Thorne snuffed out that play early. Both linebackers coming right in, making sure that Jarvis had no room to run. Second and nine for the Scots. Vaughn Eagle's done a nice job at spreading Thorne Academy's defense here on this drive. Scott's ball on the 19. Second and nine. Gagnon and Jelbert go to the far side of the field. O'Connell off the left side looking for the hole, and he finds it and gets about seven yards. It'll bring up a third and short, and of course, Vaughn Eagle now in four down territory. Oh, definitely. You can't punt, and. I seriously doubt if they'll go for a field goal. So they got to the go for it if they don't get it here on third down. O'Connell. O'Connell, a 5'9", 170 pound senior. And a scat back, very quick, and he is dangerous. Gagnon splits to the far side, double tight ends as they put Jason McLeod, number 18, on the left side, Eric Moyes on the right. Fake, Braun looking out, gets hit as he unleashes it. The ball thrown, and nice catch out there by McLeod, but just out of the end zone. No pass interference call. Mercia having coverage. Mercia might have got away with a little bump the there. And it might have been incidental as they both were tangled up looking for the football. Braun Eagle gambling and going for it all. Now fourth and a long one, and a big play here early in this contest. Still no score, and Braun Eagle having controlled the most part of this contest to this point. This is a big down for Thorne Academy. If Bunny goes to first down, they get a fresh set of downs inside the 10. Bunny Eagle not afraid to go for it all. They pitch it wide to O'Connell. He's got a lot of room to the outside. He'll have the first down and he'll have the touchdown. Bunny Eagle on the board with 10.33 to play in the second quarter. Kyle O'Connell from 12 yards out. A kid can run, and Thorne Academy was stacked up the middle and nothing to the outside. And that's the same side Thorne Academy had problems to the wide side of the field last week versus Waterville. And yes, this Bon Eagle team very much for real here in Class A. TJ Jalbert, number one, in for the extra point try. like McLeod, number 18, the holder. Good snap, good hold, and a booming high kick up and through the post. Uh, they wave it off, saying no good. Looked like it split the uprights, and of course the field goal kicker, extra point kicker, Jalbert looking up, saying that was good. He put his arms up. I thought it was dead to right. We've seen a couple of those mysterious ones on field goals and extra points, and Vaughn Eagle comes away empty on that one, but with 10.33 to play, they have the lead. Scott six, Trojans nothing. You're watching Thornton football on CTV 30. Vaughn Eagle going 56 yards in eight plays, capped off by the 12-yard run by senior Kyle O'Connell. Told you about him at the top of our cast rushing for over 130 yards last week versus Oxford Hills. And he has a good 60 here in the first half versus Thorn Academy. Touchdown was carried in by number 26, Kyle O'Connell. O'Connell is very quick. I'd like to see his time in the 40. He went around that end and was gone. Thorn didn't have a chance to even touch him. Great speed. No question about it, and Thorne's offense has really struggled this season, and 
here in the first half. They need to come up with something to answer. Kurt Gagnon, number 40, wrapping up Mercier in a hurry and also getting help by number 87 on the Scots. That would be Tim Harmon. Broadcast booth above the Scott facility in the dark and, of course, as we said, the, the loud well, the ball system. was carried by number 11, Chris Mercier. And on the tackle for the Scots, number 48, Josh Ward. Brochu and Mercia come to the near side. The Trojans start first and 10 from their own 26-yard line. And it's Jared Trudeau up the middle, breaking tackles and fighting his way out for a nice gain on first down. The good power running of Trudeau. That was second, third, fourth, fifth effort by Jared Trudeau getting the extra yardage. And Thorne well, Academy Jerry, has to get something started Jerry, right now. Because if they go three and out, Bonnie Eagle, Bon Eagle has all the momentum. Good job of patience by Coach Agresti and his staff because obviously you fall behind 6 nothing and Bonnie Eagle stacking up. Your initial thought would be to go for it all on first down, but he stays patient, picks up a good six yards on first down, and Thorne Academy needs to move the football and the chains. And boy, what a stick in there by Andy Jarvis as he just hammered on Ryan True. True looking for a place to go and didn't find it. Loss of a half a yard on the play. It'll bring up third down in a long four. Ball carried to the Trojans by number 20, Ryan True. Bonnie Eagle is stunting linebacker after Andy linebacker Gavin. after linebacker. By the time True gets the ball, he sees three green jerseys in front of him. Thornkai just doesn't have enough blockers to compensate for the nine men up front on the line. Big third down play for the Trojans. Mercy of the lone receiver to the near side. Fire out, looking for Brochu, way behind. And no flags on the play, Academy. incomplete pass for the Trojans. Go three and out. Tried to stay patient, but the big second down stick by Andy Jarvis. And the Trojans now will be forced to punt. Fourth and four for the Trojans. Jelbert back to receive. Both very dangerous. Both figured very prominently in this game already. Booming kick by Boot. Fair catch call. Ball's on the floor. And looks like Bonnie Eagle again. No, it's the Trojans. And Thorne Academy finally with a turnover. Bonnie Eagle's caught it up twice, but both Trojan times they recover the their recovery. own fumble. come up with that. Did you see who got it? Was that Buffard or? It would be Jim Buffard for Thorne Academy and the Trojans get their First big ten for the Trojans. turnover and they'll start inside Bonnie Eagle territory at the 43 yard line. So big break for the Trojans and now they'll look to capitalize. Brochu and Mercia both come to the near side of the field. Taranso on the option flips it out to True. Drew breaks one tackle, takes on two more, and a fine run for the junior, Ryan True. Kyle O'Connell went up to tackle Ryan True, well, and Ryan True ran Ryan over him like True. a back truck. Kyle O'Connell went after him, and he got run right over. Well, we saw a lot of that running last year from True Second as and only a for the sophomore, Georgia. and this year really yet to see that big, powerful running. Of course, not getting a lot of carries that Noble game because he went down with an injury, missing last week, and not getting that many carries, probably only carried the ball seven times all season. But there was the Ryan True we saw last year. Nice six yard gain on first down. Jared Trudeau, nothing doing as Kurt Gagnon, along with 51 Larry Pelletier, make the stop for the Scots. And Thornton. Ball carried by number 33. Looking at a third Jared and five. Trudeau. On the tackle for the Scots. This is a big third down Robbie again for Terrible. TA. This is a really big one for the fact that they got second life. And you're not going to get many of those. They have to take advantage. And if they have to the punt again, it's just going to give Bonnie Eagle 
even more momentum. Marcia comes to the near side, Allen to the far. Judo and True in the eye, and again, the Trojans. Duranzo, pressure on him, gets grabbed, breaks one, back against the grain. Chris Duranzo still going, gets back to the line of scrimmage. And that'll bring up fourth down, and looks like five yards once again. And now, just inside the 40-yard line, about the 37, I would think Clone Academy well, might gamble 12, here and Chris actually Durantio. go for it. Need to make something happen. They really do. I don't know if, I, don't, I can't see them punting the here. I think they really do have to go for this. They have to get something started. And it appears they are, and Bonnie Eagle kind of looks stunned that they're gonna go for it because they have two men back like on a punt. Now they're gonna come flying up and shift into position. And the Trojans can catch them totally out of position here. It'll be the pitch to True. Ryan True cuts inside and brought down from behind by Jarvis, and looks like he'll come up short. Tough spot. Ball carried by number 20, Ryan True. On the tackle for Scott, number 44, Andy Jarvis. Jarvis got him just before he got there. First and 10 for the Scots. Big play for Bonnie Eagle. Here's some very special news from the captain's galley. Four of your favorite meals are now only $12.95, and better yet, that's two for $12.95. That's right, prime ribs, stuffed scallops, baked or fried haddock with the works are only $12.95, seven days a week. Of course, the famous two for $10.95 meals with over 10 entrees to choose from are available Sunday through Thursdays. And start your day smart the galley way with no cholesterol eggs and other sumptuous specials. Head over to the captain's galley for a very special meal. Wagner's Market, 188 Lincoln Street, Saco is your neighborly variety store with all your daily needs in one quick stop. The biggest and best subs in town, ice cold beer and soda, pizza, a fine deli selection, mega bucks tickets, and daily specials. All ready for you in seconds for a speedy takeout. If you want to eat in, Wagner's has plenty of space for that too. Wagner's is infamous for its gut bomb sandwich, big enough to bomb any TA opponent or to serve to the entire TA football team who's hungry for wins and Wagners. 188 Lincoln Street, Saco, sponsor of the gutsy player of the game. Jason McLeod comes to the near side for Bonnie Eagle to the far will be Kurt Gagnon. Tailback delay play as they fake to the fullback and O'Connell gets hit high by Greg Lamar and low On the by tackle for the Trojans, number 78, Jared Greg Trudeau. Lemaire. On the carry for the Scots, number 26, Kyle O'Connell, third and seven for the Scots. Great play by Jared Trudeau. Took his man through him out of the way, went for O'Connell. And now this is a big third down for Bonnie Eagle. If TA holds, they're gonna get another possession with about four minutes to go in the half, see if they can score. Bonnie Eagle sends Jalbert and Gagnon to the far side of the field. Trojans with sole coverage out there, and they come the other way, and Mercia comes up to make a nice tackle, and then gets help, and he'll hold Kyle O'Connell well short of the first down. It'll bring up a fourth and five, the ball just over the 40-yard line. So Bonnie Eagle now leading by the six. Tackle for the Trojans, have to punt it back to Rock Academy. Sajan. On the carry for the Scots, number 26, Kyle O'Connell. Fourth and four for the Scots. Mercia dropped back by himself to return the punt. Everly Watson. 
hunting for Von Eagle. A very bad snap. Bobble loose, still on the ground. And the Trojans got it at the 27-yard line of Bonnie Eagle. Dennis Hunt, number 36, in there for Thorne Academy. And the Trojans get another big break on the special teams play. Recovered a fumble punt by Bonnie Eagle. And this time, Bonnie Eagle, a bad snap Trojans on the punt. On the and Watson couldn't get it off. Struggled with it in his feet. And Dennis Hunt coming in and timeout, Bonnie Eagle. down and recovering the ball. A timeout on the field. We'll take a break. 4.08 to play, first half. Bonnie Eagle 6, Thornton nothing. We're back after this. Welcome back to Standish. Tony Ryan along with myself, Jay Harper, Dennis Avery on the camera tonight. A very cold Bonnie Eagle complex. As Scott's treating the Trojans very cold themselves. They lead 6-0 on the 12-yard run by Kyle O'Connell. But the Trojans with back-to-back -back turnovers have it first and 10 at Bonnie Eagles 27, their best possession of the day. Ryan True off the right side into the secondary, gets outside, down inside the 15-yard line to the 14 goes Ryan True. A gain of 11, make it 12 yards on the play. And Thorne Academy will have it Ball first down and 10 at the Ryan 14. True. That was the first, first time True, by the time he got the ball into the hole, the had a hole. Bonnie Eagle again, stunting three Jelda. linebackers. He gets the hole and then just Ball's outruns the and outmans two or three Bonnie Eagle would-be tacklers and gets that first down. And that's the Ryan True of old, what he has to do tonight, now and in the second half, throwing Academy to win tonight's ball game. Durantso sends Allen and Mercia to the far side of the field, True and Trudeau in the eye. This time it's Trudeau into the secondary, one man to beat, but Jelbert, very tough, grabs up high on Trudeau and takes him down, calls him at about the six yard line, a solid gain of eight on the play. Trojan's gotta like that, but you gotta like the ball play of Jelbert. He's been amazing here Trudeau. today. Coming up with uh, fumble recoveries, the interceptions, and some pretty big tackles. Second and three. That one, very big. And Von Eagles has showed they're very tough on short yardage plays, and Thornton Academy's like they faced last week against Waterville, you would think the Trojans would like to get in on one big play, not be forced to grind it in against this very tough defensive squad. Second and a long two. Duranso and Trudeau run into each other, but Duranso able to fight forward, get across the five, and he'll be just shy of the first down, and he'll be third and about a foot. They may even have to take a measurement here. Trojan with two plays okay, to get the first 12, down and then get Chris themselves Durantio in first and goal situation the inside the five. So looking very Gavis. positive. And of course the Trojans have to stay away from the big turnover. They really do. But again, that play before Duranzo's run, Trudeau quick hit. They're keeping Bonnie Eagle from knowing what's happening. They're keeping him guessing defensively, really helping Thorne Academy. Big third down in less than a yard. Full house backfield and they go to Jerry Trudeau, goes off the left side, the ball's out on the floor, and recovered by Thornton Academy. And, but the ball coming backwards, and we'll have to see where they spot it. Joey oh. Bovi coming up with a loose ball, and we'll have to check that spot. It is over the five yard line, it's very close. The officials now actually move the ball without a measurement, so I assume they're saying it's, it's fourth down and still yardage to go. And Thorne Academy will use a timeout, 2.02 to play. And just as we said, stay away from the turnover. They do very fortunately there, but in essence, it is a turnover because the first down taken back and now a big fourth in less than a yard. And the way I look across at the markers, of course, way across the other side of the field, but it seems even close enough to take a measurement and they're not even doing that. They must have a better vantage point. Our angle, not as good. And Head coach Dick Agresti now in his 11th campaign with the Golden Trojans comes out to talk to his offense and he signals for Chris Mercy to come back in. They'll send out the powerhouse backfield as Thompson and Sargent go off. Big, big play here, fourth and less than a yard. We saw Thorne Academy against Waterville with a fourth and short go to Chris Mercy or out of the backfield. You would think here it's either going to be Trudeau or Duranto maybe on the quarterback keeper. Fourth and one for the Trojans on the five-yard line. 
the way Bonnie Eagles defense is setting up, they're setting up their two tackles right on the Thorn Academy guards. If Duranzo just gets behind his center, he'll get the, looks like one foot for the first down. All he'll have to do is just fall forward for it. Travis Roy, the center, he'll be very important in this play. Nick Tabor, the guard, and Greg Lamar, the tackle on the right side. On the left side, it's Jim Buffard and Chris Nightingale. They'll split Brochu to the far side. Of course, Joey Bovine now in at tight end, number 43. He came up with a big recovery on the last play. They go to Mercier again. Mercier breaks off the left side. Touchdown, Chris Mercier. They went back to that the exact play they used in Waterville, feeling like they can get yardage on short All down situations. Down they do. Chris Mercia blasts off the left side for five yards and a touchdown. And the Trojans answer back. 6-6 six, six the score and a Trojan down on the field. And we can't see the number. But an injured player down for Thorn Academy. And again, Mercia eluding one tackler there because that one tackler, he makes the play. Again, that's for no gain or a loss of a yard on the play, but he breaks that one tackle, and then Mercia's speed to the outside, an easy six points for Thorne Academy. And now, score knotted at six. Thorne Academy more than likely will go to Jared Trudeau's right foot and try to get the go-ahead point here on the PAT try. Excellent job by the left side of Thorne Academy's offensive line. Once that one man had come through, Thorne Academy's left side trapped the entire defense, and Mercy had plenty of running room to go up that left side. So Thorne Academy, by way of consecutive turnovers on Bonnie Eagles' special teams, get the equalizer to tie it up at six. Bonnie Eagle definitely outplaying Thorne Academy here in the first half, but right now the scoreboard reads deadlock, and the Trojans have a chance to take the lead with less than two minutes to go. Again, the clock going down. It did the same thing last time. It was at the two minute mark where it shut off. And again, so just after the two minute mark, it's, it's down and off. And still trying to get a number on the injured player for Thorne Academy. Obviously a lineman for the Golden Trojans. Duranzo the holder. Looks like Ryan True, number 20, does the snapping for the Trojans. <laughs> it could be Nightingale, 74, because I don't see Nightingale in. I see Noel Heidish now in, as the Trojans look to take the lead. And we have some movement. It'll be on Jarvis of Bon Eagle, I believe, and the Trojans will against Scott. move half the distance to the goal line. Two points here, though, doesn't really do you a whole lot of good, except, of course, if Bonnie Eagle scores again, it'll force them into the two-point try. That would still, if you scored again and got two again, that they could tie it. Norton stays with the one-point team. Good snap, good hold, and it appears a good kick, and it is. Extra point is good. So with less than two minutes to go, first half, Thorn Academy on top. They lead 7-6. We're back well, after this. Nothing takes a beating like the inside of your house. Kids, pets, odors, spills, the list is endless. But with Serve Pro Cleaning Service, your house can be spring fresh year round. With carpet, furniture, wall, and in-house drapery cleaning, insurance claim specialist, and odor removal, no job is too big for the technicians at Serve Pro. If dirt and cleaning are a problem for you, let Serve Pro take the worry out of your life and put clean, fresh happiness in your home. Hubs Exxon and Mini Mart, conveniently located on Elm Street in Saco, is also a state liquor agency. Bob's has a large variety of your favorite brands of beer, wine, and liquor. Whether you're planning a last-minute party, get-together, or just a quiet, relaxing evening at home, Bob's has just about everything you need. Sandwiches, snacks, soda, chips, and your favorite alcoholic beverage. Stop at Bob's today and get your get-together together. Bob's Exxon and Mini Mart, there for you. Joe, 
Joe, wake up. Huh? What is it? I think there's someone downstairs. No, there isn't. Go back to sleep. No, go down and look. Come on, Sue. Did you lock up? Of course. Now, would you... I don't trust those locks. Look, I put the locks in myself. That's what I mean. Okay, I'm going. Thanks, hon. Be careful. Make sure you're secure with professionally installed quality locks. Golden Rooster isn't just for breakfast anymore, even though they are the best around. Sako's best kept secret is the Rooster's delicious and economical lunches and dinners. Now the soups are homemade daily according to Mrs. Riziakis's family recipes. And the rest of the food? Well, as you can see, it speaks for itself. And be sure to leave room for the homemade desserts because we just don't have enough room here to talk about how good they are. That's the Golden Rooster, Main Street Sako, across from the post office. Welcome back to Bonnie Eagles Athletic Complex. Jay Harper and Tony Ryan. Tone Academy taking the 7-6 lead on the five-yard run from Chris Mercier on a fourth in less than a yard. And then Jared Trudeau tacks on the PAT. And the Golden Trojans have a 7-6 lead. And Thornton will kick it off with less than two minutes to go in the first half. Trudeau gets away a beautiful kick, but O'Connell squirts over to his 12 to pick it up. Get some room to the outside. Oh, baby, Travis Roy takes him high and hard and knocks him out of bounds at about the 33-yard line. And there's a tackle right there, and O'Connell is down on the field, slow to get up. Those were two freight trains going right at each other, and Roy popped them. You'll be hearing bells. O'Connell still down and probably loss of wind, you would think, when you go down that hard. Hopefully that's the case. An outstanding athlete, and you never want to see anyone injured. I know the Trojans wouldn't mind keeping him out of the lineup for a while. On the tackle for the Trojans, number 55, Travis Roy. Travis, a middle linebacker by trait. He shows it there. Job he'll probably assume next year, along with Brian Thompson, who now shares the duty with Jake DeRocher. First down handoff, it'll be Watson to the outside, and Watson able to squirt for a couple of positive yards. Good pursuit out there by the Golden Trojans as they string it up. Ball carried by number 29, Emily Watson. Again, the clock being kept down on the field, on so the we're not sure of the time. For the Trojans, number 33, Jared Trudeau. Second and eight for the Scots. Scott's and two wideouts to the far side of the field. And Braun hands back to the near side. Watson again, this time Mercier holding on, but not able to drive him back as Watson fought through for a couple more yards. DeRocher and Brian Thompson lend support. On the tackle for the Trojans, number 45, Jake DeRocher. On, on the carry for the Scots, number 29, Emily Watson. That'll be up a third and three now. Third three on the body. O'Connell down on the sideline with his warm jacket on. It appears he's going to sit out the rest of the half. But Watson doing a nice job there as he assumes the tailback position. Third and three, ball at the 40 of Bon Eagle. A big play for both clubs here in the first half. Braun trying to throw, looking downfield, man out there. And Mercier with good coverage, reaching in just at the precise time. No flag again as... Jason McLeod, number 18, really petitioning for a flag. But as Jim Morrison would say, you cannot Incomplete petition for, for a flag. <laughs> At least my cameraman, Dennis Avery, knows what I'm talking about. Thank God, because I have no clue. <laughs> a little before your time, Tony. That'll bring up fourth down and three. And Bonnie Eagle now will drop back into punting formation. As you said, Tony, to me off camera in between breaks, uh, how far back Watson sets up. Right. And DeRocher jumping off sides, and I don't think he was strong. Penalty against the Trojans. So, Port Academy with their first, I believe, penalty of the game, and it's a crucial one because it gives Bonnie Eagle the first down and keeps the drive going. And 
Again, not a lot of time left here in the first half, but Bonnie Eagle with still some life. And first and 10 on the 46 for the Scots. It's gotta be right around one minute at, at best. So Bonnie Eagle will really have to do some damage here in a hurry. And, and they've showed some very diverse offensive sets and looks and creative play calling by head coach Kerry Briggs. Ron to throw, has plenty of time, lofts it deep down the field. Mercier getting back, times it up and knocks it down. The ball intended for Chad Willett. Incomplete pass for the Scots. Mercier was just trying to tab that down, but he might have had an interception because that was right in his hands. That'll stop the clock. And now they say that's the end of the half. So that'll do it. At the end of the half, at the end of the half, as two Turn teams head to locker room. Six. If you're Thorn Academy, you gotta be feeling pretty good about yourselves right now because you played a very poor first half for the most part, but you walk off the field leading by one. If you're Barney Eagle, just the exact opposite. You played an outstanding half, but somehow you head to the barn trailing by a point. 7-6, Trojans with a lead. We'll take a break, come back with some halftime. And once again, we'd like to uh, Thank and welcome on board as a sponsor of high school football, Claire. The Claire Auto dealerships on the Claire Auto Mile, Route 1 in Saco, Claire Subaru, Claire Ford Lincoln Mercury, Claire Honda, and Claire Buick Cadillac Mazda Volkswagen. All those wonderful people. And they'd like to acquaint you with their fine staff and quality cars they have. And we'd like to have you join us for the next few minutes as CTV 30 presents the Claire Tailgate Show. We're back with more football after this word from Claire. Welcome back to Barney Eagle. And Thorne Academy leading the Scots 7-6 after the first half of play. Jay Harper along with Tony Ryan, Dennis Avery on the camera. And Tri-Captains will meet once again at midfield. Braun, Gagnon, and O'Connell for Barney Eagle. DeRocher, Tabor, and Sargent for Thorne Academy. And running down those first half stats, Tony. Not a lot of offense for either team, and very close. I didn't think that Thorne Academy would rack up as many yards as Bonnie Eagle, but very close in total yardage. Very close. Thorne had 62 total yards, and Bonnie Eagle had 72. But again, Thorne's two big main contributors, True had 39 yards, and Trudeau 25 on the ground. That was almost their entire offense in that first half. They gotta mix it up, get some passes complete, get the ball moving. Bonnie Eagle's gonna get the ball in the second half. Defensively, they have to come up big. And O'Connell had 51 second yards half, rushing. That was Bonnie team. Eagle's entire first half stats. Neither team really putting up a lot of offense. It's been a defensive-minded game. Expect some more offensive chances here in the second half, especially early, both teams knowing that they have to come out and do something offensively. Oh, the passing department, Braun one for eight yards, and Taranso 0 for in that half, and of course through the one interception. And Thorne Academy unable to get their passing game going. And Von Eagle basically came up and said, we dare you to be able to throw the football against us. We're going to stack nine men up here in the middle. We're going to come at you with everything. We're going to have our cornerbacks play sole coverage on your wideouts. And we feel they can handle it. So far they have. That gamble has paid off very nicely for head coach Kerry Briggs and the Scots. And the Trojans really need to exploit that and get something going in the air to soften it up on the run, even though they did start to exploit Bonnie Eagles defense with the running game without the passing game helping the in that last drive. And again, the two Aaron big Trudeau. turnovers back to back for Bonnie Eagle, Thorne Academy with the recovered punt and then the bad snap on the attempted punt by Bonnie Eagle on the next possession and the line drive kick and it squirts through and they said it's touched. So it's a live ball at the five. O'Connell trying to come out, breaks one tackle and he'll get it back out to about the 14 yard line. Takes a lot of punishment once again. Bonnie will start deep inside their own territory to start the second half. Squibber kicked by Trudeau, just kind of spun, rolled back to the four, and O'Connell was in trouble. On the tackle for the Trojans, number 45, Jake DeRoches. Bonnie Eagles offense, the center, Larry Pelletier, the guards, First Chad Gagnon, on the 11th, and John Thero, Chris Charest, and Robbie Harriman, the tackles. Moyes, the tight end, McLeod, the wideout, and then it's Braun, Jarvis, and O'Connell. It'll be O'Connell on this carry. Got some room to the outside, one man to beat, and O'Connell kind of tripped up 
over himself as Allen covers up for the tackle. Looked like O'Connell was off to the races there. The Trojans really have to watch that young man's speed. On the tackle for the Trojans, number 29, Justin Allen. Jarvis, great kickout block. I couldn't catch the number. I don't know if it was Trudeau or Booten. Came flying in, and Jarvis kicked him out. O'Connell ran underneath, cut the nine yards. Might have had even more. Second down and a long two now for Bonnie Eagle. They send trips to the far side of the field. Moyes splits to the near, so trying to spread out the Thornton defense. And they go right up the middle to Jarvis. He'll have the first down, a pickup of five on the play. And they'll have it first and 10 at the 25. Setting up Thornton Academy's the defense for you. Defensive Gates, tackles. Greg Lamar, the senior. Jim Bouffard for the, the junior. Shot. Defensive the ends, down, junior Joey Bovi, senior Gavis. Jared Trudeau. Dance, Your linebackers, Thompson and DeRocher in the middle, Sargent and Booten to the outside, the secondary, Chris Mercier, Kyle Shaw, and Justin Allen. They again spread it out and go to Jarvis. Jarvis off the left side, he'll get a couple. DeRocher, Buffard, and Trudeau out there, actually Bovi out there to make the stop the for the Trojans. For the start, number 44, Andy Bonnie Eagle Gavis. right now just trying to spread out Thorne Academy using three and four wide receivers, trying to get that 4-3. The Look, the sooner or later, Thorne's going to cheat up a guy and they're going to try and exploit them in the second day. The Braun to throw. Looks deep downfield. Looking out for Ouellette. He's open. Makes the catch, breaks away from Allen, he's gone! Touchdown, Bonnie Eagle. 72-yard pass play from Jeremy Braun to Chad Willette. Justin Allen getting burned on the outside, and he came in late, got hands on Willette, but couldn't hold on. And Braun goes the distance, giving Bonnie Eagle the lead for the second time this evening. 12-7 the score, and Bonnie Eagle more than likely will go for two here. That well, was just a single coverage down. play by Allen, and, and he just threw it out there, got beat, missed the tackle, and Willette was gone. Braun throws a nice football. He spirals it out there nicely. The two handoff, Kyle O'Connell, he's in. Off the right side, and Bonnie Eagle quickly taking back the momentum and the lead. The first is good by number 26. 9.59 to go. Oh, In the third oh. quarter, our score. Von Eagle 14, Ford Academy 7. You're watching Trojan Football on CTV 30. The most important item you'll ever possess is your health. And even though everyone knows it, most are too lazy or ashamed to do anything about it. Liberty Gym and Health Club is aware of this and has been helping people like you achieve a healthier, happier way of life since opening. Let the experienced staff help you do what's best for you. Whether you're 8 or 80, athlete or couch potato, you can power train, sports condition, or get personal training. No matter what shape you're in, Liberty Gym can help make it better because better bodies are their business. Three-piece living room set starting at $6.97. Twin mattress set starting at $97. Five-piece dining room set starting at $377. USA Furniture, the home of everyday low prices. If you've ever felt guilty going on vacation and having to drop your pet at a cold, impersonal kennel, then you should check out Shepherd Kennel Resort. They'll pamper your pet with personalized care and attend to special needs such as diet and medication. And of course, they offer full-service grooming, too. Like Dale, the owner, always says, nobody can offer the sophisticated elegance of Shepherd Kennel Resort. Relax. Your pet may end up having a better vacation than you do. Newly remodeled and better able to serve you is Peach's Deli. You can still take out, but now you can eat in too. And while waiting, enjoy a video game or two, or maybe a coffee. There are Italians, Syrians, calzones, salads, specialty pizzas, and subs made with the finest and freshest ingredients. 
And now, Peaches introduces the Peach Bomb, more than any one person can handle. And now, Peaches Deli offers a great variety for the health conscious. No need to make a special trip to the supermarket when you've got Peaches Deli. Ford Academy now in a hole for the second time tonight. Trailing by seven this time around as Bonnie Eagle gets the two-point conversion. Kyle O'Connell back from the shakeup late in the first half to rush it over from three yards out. And of course, the big 72-yard passing play from senior Jeremy Braun. Braun 6'2", 195, and he hooked up with his wideout. Number 86, Chad Willette. Chad Willette, six feet, 175, and a junior. Shows pretty good speed. Again, just sole coverage on the outside, and Braun, a perfectly thrown football. Mercier will field it at his 18. Off to the right side, looking for a hole, breaks up inside, gets met, hit, but he gets it out over the 40-yard line. Again, another strong return for Mercier, and the Trojans will start at their own 41-yard line after giving up a... Ball carried by number 11, yard drive. Mercia. On the tackle for the Stocks, number 29, Emily Watson. Four play, 87 yard drive for Bonnie Eagle. First Very nicely done. Brochu and Mercia come to the near side. Trojans in the eye. Trudeau off the right side, fights forward for a gain of three. This is a big drive for Thornton Academy. Giving up a touchdown just Second like that, four turn. plays. They really have to come back offensively now. Get a long drive. Even if you don't score, just get some momentum back. Right now, Bonnie Eagle is high, and they need to be taking down a little bit. And if Bonnie Eagle stops them here, they're going to have a lot of momentum when they get the ball back. Second down and seven yards for Thornton Academy. Allen and Mercia, the wideouts. Taranso to throw. Fires out. Got his man, Mercia. Mercia hogtied and brought down out there. Not knowing the number, looking through the telephone pole here. The lights in Standish. Well, I would guess pass. it was Jelbert. Number 11, Chris Mercia. And Third and one for the Trojans. Cameraman Dennis Avery says it is number one, TJ Jelbert. And that brings up a third down and one ball just over midfield into Bonnie Eagles territory. Trojans come out in the powerhouse backfield. True, Trudeau, and Thompson, the three T's straight across. Now a flag comes out and... We have flags on the play. Thornton gets the first down, it appears, but we had all kinds of delayed movement from different plays. It looked like Travis Roy, the center, snapped the ball late. It'll be against Thornton Academy. Their second Off penalty of the night. The Both have cost them first downs. One, they gave Bonnie Eagle the first down, and this one they take away. A Thorn Academy Third first six down. on the body set. So the Trojans have really stayed away from the penalties here tonight. With the 50-50 people, two that please bring their tickets to the announcer's booth. Incurred have been big 50 ones. 50 tickets, please bring them to the announcer's booth. I wish he could say that a little louder so we could all hear. Brochu comes to the near side of the field. Trojans with double tight ends. True and Trudeau in the eye. Third down and six, facing the Trojan offense. Duranzo rolling out, sets up, throws out a wobbly ball. It was tipped in the backfield, and it falls incomplete, intended for Enrac Sargent. Incomplete pass for the Trojan. That's a tough play for Duranzo, having to roll left and throw back across his body to Enrac Sargent. But if Enrac does catch the ball, he's gone. There is green all the way to the end zone. And a fourth and six now, and... Dave Booten, the junior, comes Four in to do a little Booten. And Kyle O'Connell drops back by himself. Bonnie looks to put some pressure on Thornton Academy here. And 
Now they'll back off just a little bit. Low snap. Over Booten. He's in trouble. Running to the right side. Gets down the sideline. Gets a block. One more. Booten getting a lot of blocking. Booten could go all the way. Dave Booten. Oh, baby, what a play. Wow. No flags down as Dave Booten ran all the way back to his own 30-yard line before heading up the sideline, got all kinds of blocking on the right side, then made the block, the cut against the grain, back to the left side of the field. And Ford Academy goes from turnover to touchdown, and they now are within one. 14-13, Dave Booten, amazing run. And uh, maybe this kid should be in the backfield a couple of times more for Thornton Academy. Showing great speed. O'Connell had a rush at him, and Mercia just got in his way enough to fend him off. And Booten untouched for the last 50 yards of that play. Broke a couple of tackles along the way. And now Thornton lines up for the extra point try. Taranto puts it down. The kick up. And good. The point is and good. Thornton Academy strikes back in lightning form themselves. 7-10 to go, third quarter. And a very slow offensive start here tonight has turned into a scoring fest. Back-to-back -back touchdowns for the Scots and the Trojans. We're tied at 14. You're watching Thornton Football on CTV 30. Leading the great American tradition of trading post is Aldo's Trading Post, famous since 1991. He's so far in the lead that people everywhere are asking, where's Aldo? In the heart of downtown Biddeford, of course, and he's got a new location at 152 Main Street. Just two doors down from the original, you'll find even more great bargains on everything from video games to office furniture, appliances to record albums. Stop in today, check out both stores, and play the area's newest, most rewarding, and popular game, Where's Aldo? When you find him, you'll be glad you did. You know what they call video rentals in France? No what, man? The rental de videos. La renta de video? <laughs> yeah. So what do they call halfway video and more? The halfway de video and more. Everyone knows that. At Halfway Videos and More, you're going to find more copies of the current hits, more of your favorite videos, and more of your favorite beverages and snacks. Cheesy actors not included. Welcome to Jim's Cafe, Inc., the new joint in Biddeford, serving lunch and dinner Monday through Friday and a knockout breakfast all day for only $2.99. You're going to be floored by the half-pound burgers, ultimate fries, and homemade killings. Wednesday night, it's open mic from 8 to 11 and Friday and Saturday. They're open till 3 a.m. with hot food, hotter entertainment, and BYOB. Bring your own bod, bring your own bottle, but be there. Back with you in Standish, and the Trojans strike back. Dave Boot coming up. Huge for the Golden Trojans, officially 55 yards on the run for the touchdown. Trudeau, another booming kick, and O'Connell won't get a chance at this one as it goes into the end zone, and Thorne Academy has to like that, keep the ball out of that young man's hands. And Bonnie Eagle set up first and 10 for their own 20. But going back to that play, again, officially 55 yards because you go from the original line of scrimmage, but Boot went all the way back even maybe beyond his own 30 when he darted to the outside and got out far enough and got around that corner, went right down the sideline from the 30 to the 50, and then he cut back inside, got away from one man, then he got some big, big blocks. There's some very strong, close blocks along the way, but it looked like all legal front part of the jerseys for the Trojans, and Boot coming across the grain and going the distance, and Mercier just getting enough of O'Connell to keep him out of the picture. So we've had 72-yard scoring play for Bonnie Eagle to start the second half, and Thornton answers back with a 55-yard run from Dave Booten, but again, a lot more First than that. From Scott, the 20. He ran about 90 yards in total yardage, one way back the other way, handoff to O'Connell, and he'll fight off the right side for a gain of about three yards on the play. On the tackle for the Trojans, Number 45, Jake DeRoches. And now, a big possession for Bonnie Eagle. I've said this all night, but it just keeps flipping back and forth. Bonnie Eagle has to do something offensively, otherwise Thornton has a moment. 
very surprised that Von Eagle looks for a counterplay and Trudeau kicked inside. Sargent gets enough of Gagnon to take him down just short of the first down marker. But Jared Trudeau got faked inside and had to go for it. Tackle for the tro Trojans, number 38. All right. Have a third down Sargent. and two now for Bonnie Eagle. Scott, number 40, Kurt Gagnon. Third and two for the Scott. Moyes splits to the near side. It'll be McLeod and Gagnon to the far side. Shaw and Mercia pick the two far receivers up, and Allen with sole coverage on Moyes. And quarterback Braun just takes a snap and cuts off the left side, picks up the first down easily, getting six yards on Ball the play. Ball for the first down by the quarterback, number 13, Jeremy Braun. That's a smart play by Braun, probably an audible of the line. Just a little quick something, seeing that there was no one in front of the center, goes for over seven yards and gets the first down. Ball now at the 36 yard line of Bonnie Eagle. Again, the same look for Bonnie Eagle. Hand off to Jarvis. Jarvis fights forward, gets a couple extra yards. Buffard, Bovi, DeRocher, all in on the stop. Bonnie Eagles had the most effectiveness tonight to run the ball to the middle when they split two, three, even four men wide. Now they seem to be going back to that system where they go one man wide, seven man front, and Thorne's cheating up nine, ten guys to the line. This time it's Willette to the near side, Gagnon McLeod to the far. Braun looking for Willette again over the middle. This time Allen gets the answer. The INT and down the left sideline and he's ridden out of bounds hard. And Allen up looking for a face mask, doesn't get it. But Justin Allen with the interception and a 20-yard return. And Thorne Academy will have it inside Bonnie Eagles territory. First down and 10. Justin Allen. So Allen has to love redemption there as he comes up with the INT and gets Thorne Academy another turnover and great field position to boot. Bonnie Eagle seems to be a little tired now. Seems a little fatigued. They're not getting the holes they were in the first half. Thorne Academy now has to take advantage of that. Start getting some holes, getting first downs. Thorne Academy has two receivers to the far side and only one person picking him up. They're in zone coverage, and Mercia could be wide open. Ryan True into the secondary, stays outside, and he'll have 10 yards and should be enough for a Thorne Academy first down. That time okay, right there, 20, Ryan Thorne Eagle only had one man trying to cover both Brochu and Mercia. And first down, good, Trojan. Good news for Bonnie Eagle. Thornton didn't try to throw the ball that way. Bad news is they gave up 10 yards and a first down on the Ryan True carry. First and 10, the ball now at the 29 of Bonnie Eagle. 4.25 to go. Third quarter, we're tied at 14 in Standish. A Friday night affair under the lights and a brisk, cold evening. Trudeau on the handoff, and he'll get five quick yards up the middle as he darted through that hole. And that'll bring up a second and five. And actually not brisk. The early weather report from yesterday was there's going to be a lot of winds, very windy today on this Friday, and that never happened. And we're thankful for that. Okay, Exposed to the open air Trudeau. on top of the broadcast the booth. The and Chad Gagnon. It's just a cold evening, but for the... Young men down on the field. I don't the think they're feeling any bit of this cold as they're giving it their all and working up a sweat, playing a good one here. Ball is on the 25. Second down and five. The Trojans come out strong, actually in the wishbone with Mercier and True in there with Trudeau. It's Mercier, and he's wrapped up and collared down. Making the tackle is Chris Charest, number 55. And Mercier, On nowhere the to go. Scott, number 55, Chris Charest. When Thornton Canavy came out in that wishbone with Mercier on the right, Bon Eagle shifted both of their linebackers to the side they thought Mercier would be able to run to, and they sent both of those guys in and just hit Mercier as soon as he got the ball. A loss of two on the play brings up a third and seven. Mercier comes to the near side. Justin Allen goes to the far. 
Jalbert picks up Mercier, and Watson matches up with his opposing number 29, Allen. Duranso looking to Allen, fires out, it's blocked. Eric Moyes, number 83, right in the face of Chris Duranso. And now it's fourth and seven, and Thorn Academy Incomplete inside. Von Eagles at 30. We'll probably go for it here, and again, the Trojans not giving a lot of pass protection, and Duranso fourth really, I think, needs to roll out and, and get to the right side of the field to his natural throwing side and roll right and throw right. So far, he's rolled mostly left, and when he has to set up, it's too late. Bonnie Eagle players are in his face. Brochu goes to the far. Allen comes to the near. Double slot formation with True and Mercier. Duranzo hammered and sacked. Andy Jarvis puts his helmet in Duranzo's back, and it'll be a loss of five, and Bonnie Eagle will take over on downs. The Rams will be feeling that hit the rest of the night. Jervis came in, not even touched on an outside linebacker blitz from the blind side, and Duranzo never saw him. Got ball on the 31, first and 10. On the pass rush there, Pursuit is definitely coming straight at Chris Duranzo. I think if he drops back and then rolls to the right, that'll give him more time and a better look down the field and open up his passing lanes. Hand off O'Connell. O'Connell. Very quickly to the hole, but closes up quickly as Brian Thompson, first one there to meet him. Gain of three on the play. It'll Ball be carry second and seven. Bonnie Kyle Eagle now is getting those holes, but the second linebackers are shifting five. in and closing them very quickly. O'Connell gets the ball, sees the hole, barely gets through it, and it's taken away. Cloud comes to the near side, and Kurt Gagnon sets up to the far. Fire out from McLeod, tip pick, Justin Allen. Got to wait for his blockers, got one block. And he'll be still on his feet. No, he hasn't gone down. Touchdown, Justin Allen. He stopped, danced, twirled, went into the end zone, and the Trojans have the lead. And Justin Allen with back-to-back -back interceptions. And this one for six. And the Trojans, 20. And Bonnie Eagle now 14. Interception turnovers have down really been Allen this ball game, especially for the Golden Trojans. They're winning the war of turnovers, and Justin Allen, a beauty. He Did ran down the sidelines. Guy missed the tackle. He did a spin. Touchdown. That is very good. about a 45-yard return for Allen. And he had one man to beat because Booten got a nice block out there and he got another block. And he stopped on his man, got hit, and looked like he was gonna step out of bounds, but that left foot stepped right near the sideline, just short, and then he did a little spin move and waltzed into the end zone. Six points, Thorn Academy, and Justin Allen has definitely made up for being burned for the touchdown earlier. He has six back for Thorn Academy and his second interception of the night. And flag on the play, I believe it'll be against Bonnie Eagle, a la Thornton Academy last week versus Waterville. The Trojans should get to kick off inside Bonnie Eagle's territory. Good snap, good hold, good kick. Jared Trudeau, three for three, and he has Thornton Extra Academy up by seven. Good. With under two minutes to go, third quarter. Thornton Academy 21, Bonnie Eagle 14. At Soccer Redemption Center, redemption is our only business, so we give you the best service around. At Soccer Redemption, we accept any quantity of returnables. We trust your honest pre-count. You won't stand in long lines. In fact, if you have young children or are disabled, we'll come to your car. And if your organization plans a bottle drive, team up with Soccer Redemption. We'll give you 10% above their value and park our trailer for collection at your location or ours. Is there an important birthday, anniversary, or graduation in your future? Whether you're having a party for five-year-olds or 40-year-olds, Party Castles is a place to go to get your party off the ground. From more than a rainbow tableware, to streamers, to personalized balloons, Party Castles has what you need. Party Castles does balloon deliveries, balloon decorating and sculpting. And if you're getting married, see Janine for wedding decorations, printed wedding invitations and supplies, and rental of the wedding bell. If you've got something to celebrate, you've got to get to Party Castles. 
Hi, this is Bill O'Neill, owner of Bill O'Neill's House of Rock and Roll, Route 1 in Saco. For the past seven years, we've been your local music store. No need to leave town to find the music you want. Great selection, good prices every day on CDs, tapes, and records. Be sure to check out our large selection of used CDs with over a thousand titles to choose from. We're open daily, 10 to 8, Sundays, noon to 5. Major credit cards accepted. Come in. Bill O'Neill's House of Rock and Roll, Route 1, Saco. Jay Harper and Tony Ryan with you. Dennis Avery on the camera tonight on this cold evening in Standish and Thorne Academy with two huge plays. Dave Booten on the bad snap, attempting to punt, had to scramble all the way back to around his 30 yard line, maybe a little more, darted to the outside and then it was just Dave Booten and some big blocks as Booten got down the sideline, got a couple more blocks, cut back across the field and went the distance. Total of 70 plus yards running, but officially 55 yards is the point of the snap on the fourth down play. And then Justin Allen right there, a 45 yard return and a great move at about the seven yard line by Allen. Gets him into the end zone and the Trojans lead here in the third quarter, 21-14 as Jared Trudeau, the senior again, squibs another one away. Hits a Bon Eagle player, it's on the field, still down and O'Connell picks it up. Looking for some blocking, still moving. O'Connell's going to take some big hits. That kid is quick, fast, and he's also very tough. O'Connell, 5'9", 170, and he has taken some licks here this evening, but he continues to be prolific and dangerous for Bonnie Eagle. And now Thorne Academy has a seven-point lead as we have had a seesaw battle here tonight. Bonnie Eagle took a 6-0 lead in the second quarter on a 12-yard run First from O'Connell. Trojans answered back late in the second quarter. Chris Mercier from five yards out. Jared Trudeau's kick made it 7-6 at the half. Thorne Academy. O'Connell to the right. Cuts inside and gets leveled. The ball on the field. Loose. The Trojans got it. Justin Allen has the recovery. And the big stick from behind. I didn't see who levied Kyle O'Connell from behind, but it may have been 58 Bufard. We'll have to check that. Might have been Shaw, too, as they Bumper smack his helmet. The Trojans, number but 29, Justin Justin Allen has Allen. his third big turnover here in the third quarter. Two interceptions, a fumble recovery. First and 10 on the Academy with great field position. First and 10 at Bonnie Eagle's 28-yard line. Bonnie Eagle is self-destructing before our eyes. That's three turnovers, and it's been about six minutes. TA can take control here. Bonnie Eagle is in deep trouble. Trudeau off the right side. Has some running room. And he gets out for about five yards as Bonnie Eagle's linebacking core wraps him up, takes him down. Pelletier, Charest, Gagman, and Eric Moyes in all on the stop. And I well, think Garrett that'll do it here. Garrett, Trudeau. In the third Tackle quarter. Larry and that will do it. After three quarters in Standish, Thorne Academy 21, Bonnie Eagle 14. We're back with the fourth quarter right after this. Looking for someplace old yet someplace new? High quality food and entertainment, yet priced within reach? Then the Carryman Pub is for you. From a warm family gathering to the excitement of big screen satellite sports with free pizza, it's all at the Carryman Pub. Now featuring light lunches at a light price, in addition to their famous blackboard specials. Carryman's also has happy hour prices all night long, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, karaoke Thursday, and outstanding live entertainment Friday and Saturday. With something for everyone, you can't go wrong with a visit to the Carryman Pub. As we get set to start the fourth quarter, junior quarterback Chris Taranso brings out the Golden Trojans. Wishbone backfield with Thompson, True, and Mercia, the three juniors, all in the backfield. Counterplay, Ryan True. True running hard, but Bonnie Eagle with a lot of help as Evelie Watson first got hammered, but then it was Jarvis well, and McLeod there for the stop. True will come up. Third and four for the 
Trojans. On the tackle for Scott, number 44, Andy Javis. Number one, TJ Javis. Just a little bit short. It'll be third down and four yards for Thorne Academy. As Jared Trudeau trots back in for Thorne Academy, Duranso rushes back to the huddle. Timeout for the Trojans. Thorne Academy, Chris Duranso uses a timeout, feeling that play was slow to come out of the huddle and didn't want to take a five-yard delay of game penalty as head coach Dick Agresti walks onto the field. Let's quickly recap the scoring here in this game. As we said, midway through the second quarter, Bonnie Eagle. Route 202 by Mills, route Got on the board with a 12-yard run from also Kyle O'Connell. That Bill, coming at 10.33 of the second. Thank you very much. The extra point try, no good. And Bonnie Eagle led 6-0 with two minutes left in the first half in the second quarter. Chris Mercier from five yards out. The PAT good by Jared Trudeau, and it was 7-6. And to start the third quarter and second half, it was lightning in a bottle as Bonnie Eagle on their fourth play went 72 yards, Jeremy Braun to Chad Willette, and the extra point rushed by Kyle O'Connell, and it was 14-7, and Thorne Academy right back, the amazing 55-yard run from Dave Booten, PAT again by way of Jared Trudeau's right foot, 14-14, and then Justin Allen coming up with his second turnover, second interception in a row, he rushed it back 45 yards, returned it back 45, and the extra point again, good from Trudeau, and it's 21-14, Thorne Academy with it, third and five, and Ryan True on the straight eye handoff, doesn't get much, and that'll bring up a fourth and three Ball carried by for number Thorne 20, Academy. Ryan True on the Bon Eagle did a good job stacking the line, not allowing True to get through, and now it's a big fourth down call for Thorne Academy here, whether they look like they're going to go for it. Bon Eagle stops and they're going to get the ball back and there's going to be plenty of time left on the clock. Ryan Thompson brings the play in for Coach Agresti. A fourth down and actually it's four yards here for Thornton Academy. Brochu and Mercia go to the far side. And Rack Sargent, the tight end on the right side. It's Thompson and True in the eye. Ryan Thompson trying to push the pile forward, and he fights down. He'll be very close. It depends where the spot is, but Thompson, again, he is a bull at that fullback position. It'll be very, very close. They'll bring the chains out for the first time this evening. 10.21 to go, fourth quarter, and again, Thornton Academy trying to capitalize on the turnover. Justin Allen with three consecutive big plays. Back-to-back okay, -back interceptions Brian and then the Thompson. fumble recovery. And Thompson with it, fourth and four, tries to go right up the gut. He really pushed the pile and looks like he's going to be just, just short. Missed by about four inches and Bon Eagle takes over on downs, trailing by seven. A lot of time Scott left, Holt, and Scott of course, on the seven point deficit. That would force Bon Eagle, if they do score, to go for two and the win, you would think. They could also, of course, go for the tie and look to play some overtime football. But this game living up to its billing. Bonnie Eagle can definitely play with the elite of Class the A. Playing with Oxford Hills, losing by seven last week. Certainly getting better week by week. O'Connell trying to get outside. He gets a couple. Now it's important for Bonnie Eagles offensive line to suck it up and really start to push Thorne off that line because Thorne has nine guys the coming. They're going to try and stuff the run. Sajin. On the carry for the Scots, number 26, Kyle O'Connell. Second down and eight. Jelbert and Gagnon come to the near side. And they pitch to O'Connell to the far side of the field. Darts inside, trying to get outside. A fine tackle out there. 
have to check the number on that, but an outstanding tackle coming up was Justin Allen, 29. And he makes a big play down low on the tackle to take for the down Kroger, O'Connell. On the carry for the Scots, number 26, Kyle O'Connell. Big 35. third down right here for Bonnie Eagle. They need this. If they don't get this, Thorne's going to get the ball back. They get the ball, they start running, get first down, and they can waste a lot of time off that clock. Bonnie Eagle sends triples to the near side of the field. Gagnon, O'Connell, and McLeod all out here. And the Trojans only send out two defenders to pick them up. Braun to throw, looks out over the middle, and throws behind his intended receiver, Moyes. Incomplete pass. And that'll bring up fourth down and five, and Bonnie Eagle, deep inside their own territory, will look to move to punting formation, and of course, a fake punt is not out of the realm of possibilities. But deep inside your own territory, you would think Coach Briggs would have to play it close to the vest here and kick it away and hope his defense can hold. And his defense has really done the job here today. Touchdowns have all come by way of turnovers or big plays. Of course, the blown punt by Thornton turns into a touchdown. Again, a very bad snap. Pressure coming in, partially blocked. And the ball on the ground. Mercier picks it up, and he's got some blocking down the sideline. Mercier, now he's cut back against the grain, stays on his feet, and finally brought down. And Mercier looked like he had room down that sideline, decided to stop and go back against the grain. That ball partially blocked, and Mercier dangerously picked it up. Reminded us of, uh, looked like the ball got blocked, so that's a, a live Let's football. So smart play by Mercier. Mercier. First and 10. Mercer Trojan. always thinking about that big play. But the Trojans get it back with great field position. The ball at the 31 of Bonnie Eagle, 8 25 and counting. Trudeau on a quick opener on the left side, and he'll pick up four yards on the play. Bonnie Eagle coaches to our right course yelling there was movement it looked like Trudeau was off the snap just a little bit too soon but no flag on the play and that'll bring up second, second down and long for five Trojans. for Thornton Academy and of course first year in Class A football you might not always get the respect that some of these teams have been around for a long time you wouldn't think that'd be the case but sometimes that is true it seems to be true for rookies and most sports especially in the NBA and you don't get the calls maybe first year rookie team Bon Eagle not getting the calls they'd like to see here. Second and a long five for the Trojans. They come in double slot formation. Inside counter to Mercier. Breaks back against the grain. Got some room to the outside. And Mercier loses the football out of bounds, but not before he picks up nine yards and a Thornton Academy first well, down. By number 11, Chris Mercier. There's that. First down for the Trojans. Very creative running and a kid that can make it all happen. The counter play designed to go to the opposite side of the field. As soon as he got the ball, though, he saw some green jerseys that way. Saw wide open back to the near side of the field. Went that way. And Mercier gets nine and three. First down and 10. Clock stops with the ball going out of bounds at 7.21 to play in the contest. Trojans up by seven. Trudeau on the straight dive play. Picks up three yards. It'll be second and seven. And this is very close to the situation with Thorne Academy self-destructed last week, of course, on the bad exchange on the on center the to quarterback. The Trojans, and now Thorne Academy can just Trudeau. really take the care of the football. Keep running the ball and get positive yardage, quick dives like that. Again, even if they don't Second get the first down the here, Trojans. they are within range of Jared Trudeau's right foot. Which would make it a two-possession ball game and with five minutes, because if the clock keeps running, it would be around five minutes. That's not a lot of time to get the ball, score, get the ball, score again. It's very difficult. Kyle Shaw splits to the near side of the field. Chris Mercier to the far. Bon Eagle stacking it up in the middle. Counter play. Ryan True into the secondary and trips over his own man, Jim Buffard. And Ryan True got tangled up at the five or else True had six. Ball carried by number 20, Ryan True. That might have been the game. <laughs> I... I don't see Bon Eagle scoring two more touchdowns with only six minutes to go. 
and True had a wide open, just tripped. That's a tough break for Thorne Academy. Oh, it'll unfold here in the next couple of minutes. First in goal from inside the five, and it's just about the place where Chris Mercier ran it in for Thornton's first touchdown, but exactly, that was six points, and just an unfortunate happening. Two offensive players get tangled up downfield. And off to Trudeau. Trudeau pushing the pile, pushing the pile. He's going to be very, very close. And the Trojans now starting to really wear down Bonnie Eagles defense, who has been asked to be on the field an awful lot here in the second half. They had that quick strike touchdown, and then every other time, they've been pretty much one, two, three, and out. One, two, three, interception, interception. Ball carry, but number 33, Jared Trudeau. It's really Big tough goal. to keep calling upon your defense to do it again and again and again. Line. And they've done an extremely good job of holding Thorne Academy. But when you keep giving your defense the ball on the two-yard line, it's not, you're not doing very well offensively. Second and goal from the one. Thompson, Trudeau, and True. They go to Trudeau. Off the left side. Touchdown. The senior, Touchdown Jared Trudeau. Trudeau into Number the end zone and Thorne Academy has a 13 point lead with 5.09 to go in the contest. That, I don't know if they're going to go for two here. They'll probably go for one and make Bonnie Eagle win it themselves. That's a tough break for Bonnie Eagle really because the Mercy makes a great play, moves it up. Defensively they're called upon. It's a tough play. It's late in the game. They're tired. But again, if Bonnie Eagle doesn't turn this one out to be a win, they've shown an impressive game tonight. They are a really good team. They've certainly earned my respect, and I knew coming in that they were a good team, a tough team. They have a lot of size. They have quickness. They have some talented kids. Snap and the kick. All good as Jared Trudeau, 4 for 4 with his right foot. And he had six on the ground. Trudeau. And Thorne Academy now leads 28-14, 5.09 to play. You're watching Thornton Football on CTV 30. My family's affiliation with Stockland Benefit Savings Bank goes back at least 100 years. My grandmother made deposits at the bank, including one from me when I was born. Our family has done business with the bank for over four generations. Why? Because Stockland Benefit Savings Bank is a very human place. One is not a mere account number, but a person treated with respect and appreciation. After a day of hustle and bustle, treat yourself to Alice's Place, 25 Washington Avenue, Old Orchard Beach. Alice's Place is the home of the Stromboli and also offers complete Italian dinners, hot and cold sandwiches, delicious soups and salads, and fresh dough pizza and calzones. And be sure while you're there to ask about their desserts and luncheon specials, and remember, Alice's Place delivers. Hey, there goes Mr. Alice. Make your presentations come to life with color. Mailboxes, etc. brings you Xerox color copies for as low as 79 cents. And there are so many possibilities. You can turn black and white copies to color. You can highlight color, color conversion, and merge documents. So get your high-resolution color copies today at Mailboxes, etc. on Saco Island, your local UPS fax copy, and now color copy store. Tradition and Maine go hand in hand. And one tradition the locals enjoy is visiting Wormwoods by the breakwater, Camp Ellis. Wormwoods has been a family affair for more than 50 years, serving up the finest and fresh seafood, certified Angus beef, as well as chicken and pasta dishes. Wormwoods enjoys making you feel at home with hearty meals, lighter portions for small appetites, and gladly accommodates those with special dietary needs. Visit Wormwoods. Become a part of the tradition. Definitely when you look back at the film of this game, and especially if you're the Bonnie Eagle coaching staff and Bonnie Eagle fans, you'll really say, where did this game go? And they really had control. They were playing some tremendous football, strong defensively, really matching up well. Thorne Academy's passing game, nil here this evening. And that just hasn't worked. They've stacked it up inside. And the turnover is really the key here in this game. Thorne Academy has done a nice job staying away from the big turnovers. They've had one. And they've had two penalties that hurt them momentarily, but not big factors in the game. Of course, the one that took away the first down and they ended up having to punt, Booten went 
55 yards officially for the touchdown. So that really worked to the Trojans' favor. And again, Justin Allen, just an amazing second half after being burned for the 72-yard touchdown. He comes back with two interceptions, a fumble recovery. One of the interceptions returned 45 yards for a touchdown himself as it's Watson coming out to the near side of the field. And Travis Roy, 55. Dennis Hunt, 36. Return looks by like Brian Thompson, 35. Watson. All in on the stop on Watson. The and they'll start first and 10 from their own 30. 5.09 to go in the contest. There's mysteriously no clock moving or evaporating on the kickoff. That's where it was after the touchdown by Thornton. Scott's ball on the 30. The officials, though, still, it appears, keeping it on the field. Trojans drop back into zone defense. Braun rolling to his right. He's coming back across the grain. Got Moyes, and he's got a lot of blocking. Moyes with a nice move. Look out. Eric Moyes still going. And finally brought down. Nice tackle down low by Enrax Sargent as Eric Moyes broke two or three would-be tacklers of the Trojans. And that'll move the chains. Stop the Completed clock while they move the chains. Down to number 83. And a nicely Aaron. designed play. You saw Braun roll to the right, looking downfield, looking downfield, and then he threw back to the left. First down on the 42. Vaughn Eagle had all the blocking there, and Moyes a nice run, breaking a few tackles along the way. Vaughn Eagles can still make a run of this if they can score here in the next few minutes. Onside kick, and you never know. O'Connell rolling right. And nowhere to go. Booten and Justin Allen again on the stop for Thornton Academy. I don't know if that's a set. Mon Eagle should be running here. Four minutes to go. You're down a couple touchdowns. Really don't need to put in a T formation. You've got to start scoring some points. Number 26, Kyle O'Connell. Second and 12 for the Scots. Loss of two on the play. It'll bring up second and 12. The clock continues to move now under four minutes. Of course, with that rushing play, keeping him inbounds. And Bon Eagle has to be weary of that. Again, they go to that play. They run the reverse. And there's blocking out here again. Putin reaches in. Can't get him. Mercier gets a hold of the jersey. And they keep him inbounds. That clock should continue to move. The official clock stopped up there, but the official down on the side kept the clock moving. And again, a tackle was inbounds. Carried for the first down for the Scots, number 86, Chad Willette. Reverse to Willette off the O'Connell run, and now Bonnie Eagle will use a timeout. And Official coming over, First down for the telling squad. Kerry Briggs, the head coach, that the clock is on the field and it's still going, telling him the time, and it is definitely way below the 3.29, and now Jeremy Braun, timeout. quarterback, Bonnie uses Eagle. a timeout, and we would guess it's right around 2.20 to play here in the contest, and Bonnie Eagle with the first and 10 at the 19 of the Trojans, and a couple of big plays back-to-back, -back. and Bonnie Eagle supporters might be saying, where's have those plays been here tonight but again Thorn Academy shifting into the prevent defense and, and backing up a bit and of course being caught a little off guard looking for something downfield and Vaughn Eagle not giving them anything downfield everything's happened behind the line of scrimmage but it's happened and it's worked and Vaughn Eagle still in this game trailing 28-14 we'll take a break we're back for the final few minutes here right after this Brady's has moved and is bigger and better than ever now they have a new retail store at 464 Elm Street, Route 1, Biddeford. Full of jackets, tees, sweats, and sports shirts with your favorite team logo ready to wear. Hi, I'm Mike from Brady Screen Print. For price, quality, service, and dedication, come see us. Now at 464 Elm Street, Route 1, Biddeford. First, for your personal sports clothes needs. family welcomes you to the Village Inn restaurant of Old Orchard Beach. At the Village Inn, you'll enjoy a warm family atmosphere and generous portions of fresh, delicious seafood, pasta, and beef. Dine in comfort as you savor shrimp, lobster stew, and prime rib. Or bring the whole family in for steak, lobster, chicken, or our famous seafood platter. Relax in our lounge or plan your next banquet for our newly renovated function room. The Village Inn of Old Orchard Beach for delicious family dining. 
CD-ROM, Windows, Internet, Modem, CompuServe. If these words have no meaning to you, then you need to learn about WidgetWorks. New to the area is a revolutionary computer resource center that makes computers accessible, affordable, and fun. You're observing a partial list of services. Computers are a fact of life. They can be confusing, difficult, or painless and pleasurable. Come to WidgetWorks. Let them teach you the painless facts of life. Barnum Animal Crackers next to Jurassic Dinosaur Cookies. Gumballs and Mary Janes next to Nintendo Bubblegum. Penny candy everywhere. Are you in the Twilight Zone? No, you're at the Wayway store where every day is a step back to 1929. Stop in and visit with Catherine and Peggy for all your everyday grocery needs and then some. And remember a slower, kinder time. From penny candy to pet locks, dried beans to dolls with homemade outfits, you'll find it at the Wayway store. Step back in time at the Wayway store without leaving today. Back with you at the Bonnie Eagle Athletic Complex. Jay Harper, Tony Ryan, Dennis Avery. And Bonnie Eagle still hanging tough, not going away. Uh, first and 10 at the Trojans, 19. Ron goes to O'Connell and nothing there. And the Trojans pick him up and hammer him down. Big Greg Lamar getting him up high and slamming him to the turf. Looked like Jared Trudeau had him down low. So Trudeau and Lamar on that left side making the play. O'Connell, a threat. 78, Greg on Lamar. any given play, he's a threat. And certainly, Bonnie Eagle Kyle feeling that if you get in his hands, he can make play. something happen. But the clock continues to move. Von Eagle now with a second and 10. Braun looking to throw. Pressure coming in. He's got it out there, man. There, yeah, Chris Mercier. Coming in, making up ground, and at the last minute, taking it away from Jason McLeod. Broken up by number 11, Chris Mercier. Big play there by Mercier. Oh, yeah. Braun had him wide open. If he had just turned around earlier, because he had beaten Mercier by four or five steps. But once the ball's in the air with Mercier's great speed, just outrunning him for the play taps it away. I like this kid, Jeremy Braun. He drifts back into the pocket, sets up, and always seems to get the ball away just in time. Florida County's pass rush coming in, but he always gets it away. And boy, he throws a tight spiral. Third down and 10 now. Gagnon goes in motion, the pitch to O'Connell. Rolling right. And the Trojans come up and take him down and keep him in bounds. And it'll bring up a fourth down in about seven. 26, Kyle O'Connell. And the clock will roll. Von Eagle will have to use a timeout if they want to save any clock here, and they don't. Again, Fourth and seven. Again, the clock is on the field. And it's on the last play, and tackle was by number 38, Rack Sajan. Definitely under two minutes to go, and this is the play of the game for Bonnie Eagle. If they don't convert the first down, Thorn Academy will just sit on the football and wrap this one up and be very happy to drive. Back to Sacco. The reverse again, and now the pass coming off that. Throw downfield, the man open, but Gagnon has it slip in and out of his hands. Incomplete as Chad Willett, number 86, got the reverse. He's a lefty, and boy, incomplete he, pass. he had him pass. wide open. And that'll be an exchange of possession on downs, and the Trojans will take over, leading by 14, and can pretty much wrap this one up. Good showing here by the Scots tonight. They really have shown that they are a team to contend in Class A. And maybe not this year. They'll probably get into the playoffs. Maybe not contend with the other big schools, Biddeford, Thornton, Marshwood. But within a couple years, they will be a force in Class A. And talking to the coaches of Bonnie Eagle, they said they lose a lot next year. So they might have to have rebuild and take it on the chin a little bit next year as Ryan True takes the handoff. But this year, really a good year for them to step up in a Class A. Not uh, quite the same as Marshwood did when they stepped up. That can leave as a... 90 or 89? Somewhere right in that vicinity. And they ran the table, went 11-0 and, and won the state championship. For the Trojans, number 20, Ryan True. Who's it? 89 or 90? Yeah, Second exactly and seven in there. For the Trojans. And, of course, they'll fall now to 1-2. and two, But, boy, they've been right there with everybody. And this team will definitely finish 4-4. Four and four, And you never know in the postseason if they stay healthy. Braun and O'Connell are a dangerous, dangerous pair. And, of course, Jarvis, their fullback, is a great defensive player, too. What an outstanding two-way player. Inside handoff, Jared Trudeau, and he'll get forward for a gain of about one. And this game very close to being over. Again, the official clock being kept by the officials. 
referees Ball on the field. Number 33, Jared Trudeau on the tackle for the Scots. Number 55, Chris Charest. Third and six now for Thorne Academy. Trojans next week at home to play Marshwood. Hawks taking on Sanford this week. Looking to hand the Redskins their 32nd consecutive loss in high school football. Ryan True to the outside, and he's going to get out of bounds and stop the clock, but I think he'll have the first down. So Thorne Academy. Enjoying Ryan True's return, and certainly he's had a good performance carrying the football here this evening. And the first down, chains move, and Thorne Academy now will definitely wrap this one up. First and 10 for the Trojans. Just a reminder, at the conclusion of tonight's game, we will once again be picking our gutsy players of the game, sponsored by Wagner's Market. Again, a lot of strong performances, and we'll have to... First down handoff, Jared Trudeau. And Trudeau for a gain of about three. And Thorne Academy now starting to hug each other, and I think that play might have done it, or will they have to run one more? A couple of kids definitely stand out as you look to pick the gutsy players. Okay, number 33, Jerry Trudeau on the tackle for the Scots. Again, a lot of strong Chris performances. Tonight, there seems to be a few who I can think right off the top of my head and probably got a good shot at getting it, if not a lock already. Would one be Justin Allen? Uh, you don't want to give it away, Tony. And make these guys stay around and wait to see this. Second and six for the Trojans. He would be a strong candidate. Of course, we always ask Dennis Avery, our cameraman's opinion. We don't always listen, but we always ask. Vaughn Eagle using a timeout. Score 28-14. And Thorne Academy moving to 2-1 and one now. And certainly had to work for this one tonight. Again, the turnovers detrimental to the Scots. Thorne Academy use them to their advantage. Full house backfield for the Trojans. And Taranso goes on the option, and he cuts up inside, and he'll get out for another first down. Taranso says he didn't go all the way down. He rolled on a Bon Eagle Scots player's back, but gain of eight for Taranso, and a first down once again for Thornton Academy. Ball carried by number 12, Chris Taranzio. On the tackle for Scots, number 75, John Thoreau. This is a big one for Thorne Academy because it gives them a lift going into next week against Marshwood, a real good team this year. What I like about this year is there's so much parity, and it's good parity. Years past, there's been a lot of good teams. Ryan True picks up six yards on the play, thrown down. Ball carried by number 20, Ryan TJ True Jalbert. on the tackle for Scott. Number one, TJ Jalbert. If I was going to pick a... Gutsy player for Bon Eagle. Jalbert would be my defensive Final score, player. Trojans 28, Scott 14. And that'll do it in Standish. Thorne Academy comes on and strong the in the second the high half. Are open if you're driving and out that way. The rear gates to the high school are open. So they will drive. Out behind the school. Back to Sacco with a 14-point victory. Final score. Thorne Academy Golden Trojans 28. Bon Eagle Scott's 14. We'll take a break. Back with our gutsy players and our final wrap. Once again, CTB 30 would like to welcome on board as a sponsor of high school football, Claire. The Claire Auto Dealerships on the Claire Auto Mile, Route 1 Soccer.